In terms of why this should be the major ILID, I'd like you to think about the starting material. So we've converted this into the metallocarbene. And now the question is, what about this five-membered nitrogen ring? It, it's highly likely that the two groups on nitrogen and on the neighboring carbon will want to orient themselves in a trance arrangement. That is, this nitrogen can be in one of two pyramidal forms. And it will adopt the pyramidal form that puts the carbene side chain in a pseudo-equatorial orientation, trance to the ester, which means the electron pair is pointing up here in a pseudo-axial orientation. And so if it's 99 or more percent in this pyramidal form, metallocarbene addition should come in cis to the ester to give us this ilid, which is this ilid. Now, if we do the homolysis of this carbon-nitrogen bond, we get to this biradical. So we just broke the bond between this carbon and this nitrogen. And you can see that now in this particular point in time where we've broken this bond, these two radicals are very close together. And recombination is probably quite fast. So a lot of it will go through migration with retention. But some of it will undergo bond rotation and eventually get to an achiral biradical that, when it recombines, should give racemic material. So that's our explanation for that. Uh, let me tell you about um, some related chemistry, a little bit more recent. We wanted to look at the that was a pyridine to pipiridine ring expansion. Here's uh, one carbon smaller, an azetidine going to a pyrrolidine. So we're, we were interested in making uh, pyrrolizidine alkaloids. And as a test case, we looked at this simple example. So here we have a nitrogen in a four-membered ring on the neighboring carbon, an ester group, and attached to also to the nitrogen, a benzyl group. And with ethyl diazoacetate, copper catalyst, we generate now an ilid, an azetidinium ilid. And this, this ilid has two options. It can migrate the benzyl group from nitrogen to carbon to give us this. Or it can migrate the carbon-centered, or the ester-substituted carbon, to give us a ring expansion product like this. And this is the only thing we saw, 82% yield. And that's the work of uh, John Vanecco, my next to the last University of Utah student. He actually graduated after I had moved to the University of Alberta. That was an interesting result, because look at this case. Here we have a nitrogen. And just like this one, it's got a benzyl group and an ester-substituted carbon. Both are reasonable migrating groups. This is treated with this uh, malinate reagent, copper. We generate an ammonium ilid. And now in this case, the only group that migrates is the benzyl group. 92% yield benzyl migration, no migration of this group. That's the opposite of what we saw up here. Why? Well, the difference is in this ilid, the ester substituted carbon is encased within a strained ring. And that ring strain activates this carbon-nitrogen bond so that the inherent preference of a benzyl over uh, an ester is overcome by the release of ring strain. And we see only the ring expansion product. So that result gave us uh, some confidence that we could do something very similar to what I showed you for epilupinine. But now with both rings one atom smaller. So we start out, instead of with proline ester, we start out with this azetidine ester. And our diazoketone is also one carbon shorter. So we end up with this substrate. And with copper, this closes to make the uh, spirocyclic ilid. And this undergoes just ring expansion, rearrangement by migration of the ester-substituted carbon to give us these two diastereomeric pyrrolizidine products. Unfortunately, the diastereoselectivity was not so good. The overall yield was good. The other unfortunate thing is these are completely inseparable. Uh, however, 
if we reduce the carbonyl, in each case with complete facial selectivity, and that selectivity comes from hydrogenation of the carbonyl from the convex face of the bicyclic system. So here we come in from the back, here we come in from the top. We get these two products. So this is the hydroxy ester, but here, the one that comes from delivery from the back, the resulting alcohol can spontaneously lactonize to give us this. And now each, these are, of course, completely separable. They have very different physical properties. And we can take each one separately and reduce the ester to get uh, either platinacine or terniforcidine in good yield. But we were also interested in whether this was a general process. This is quite interesting because the starting materials are pretty simple. Just a substituted azetidine and a diazo compound. Can we use this to make a library of pyrrolidines? So we decided to generalize things and look at the effect of the substituents on the ring and the substituent on the nitrogen. Uh, could, these, could we vary these substituents and still see ring expansion? Uh, and what types of R1 were going to be so dominant that we preserve the four-membered ring and migrate the R1 group? And uh, this is the chemistry of Tina Bott, one of my current graduate students. And uh, so the first thing Tina did was she took the same substrate as before, but now with a melanate a diazo compound. And she found that actually microwave conditions work the best here. And she got a very good yield of this pyrrolidine triester, uh, which is actually a potentially very uh, interesting and useful compound for studying certain uh, neurochemical processes. Um, she then looked at the N-allyl derivative, and we thought that was an interesting case, because remember, I told you earlier that an allyl 2-3 shift should be much easier than a 1-2 shift, should have a much lower barrier. And yet, with the N-allyl azetidine, we see only ring expansion, no allyl migration. So that tells you that really the ring strain of this azetidine is starting to totally dominate the, the uh, hemoselectivity of the intermediate ileid. Now here we've completely taken out any sort of conjugating group to stabilize the, the migrating center. We just have a pair of alkyl groups on here. Now this reaction didn't go in very good chemical yield, but the only isolable product, again, came from ring expansion. The benzyl group did not migrate, just this tertiary carbon. And now here's the craziest one of all. Here is an azetidine with nothing on the carbons of the ring. It still has an N-benzyl group. And with ethyl diazoacetate and copper acac, our only product in pretty good yield is this proline derivative, where we've ring expanded by way of a simple CH2 that lacks any stabilizing group, and still no benzyl migration. Um, and I should point out, that a very similar reaction using a different catalyst system was reported way back in the early 70s uh, by Hatu and Watanabe. Um, and they reported a similar result, which is it does the ring expansion rather than the benzyl migration. So, so this really suggests that there's something special about these strained rings um, in terms of dominating the migratory aptitude. Uh, one case where we did see no ring expansion, only benzyl migration, was the same azetidine, but now a more stabilized uh, diazo compound. That gives a more stabilized, longer-lived ammonium ilid. And in that case, it seems that um, it's more sensitive to the inherent stability of the migrating group. And we get only benzyl migration, again, though, in quite poor yield. And finally, one example Tina did in an intramolecular case. Now with the diazo carbon eight atoms away from the nitrogen, uh, in order to give us this sort of 8-5 system, uh, which is uh, sort of found in the core of a class of alkaloids such as uh, vanazamines and nicotamarin A, um, this reaction worked, albeit in an unoptimized 40% yield to give us uh, this mixture of diastereomers. And Tina's in the process now of, of uh, uh, optimizing this transformation. 